Well, I want to thank you. You know, I had some discussions online, offline about this issue. The last two times I spoke on this floor, I implored us as a body to work together, to not just continue to build pressure, but rather build consensus. In some form, I think this has, what this particular bill in front of us has done and taken that shape. So with that, I want to ask you just a few questions so I have some clarity about how this works and the role that I might ultimately play in it. There's some questions about transparency regarding the tax credit for the scholarships. Can you answer a couple of questions for me, please? Please, go right ahead. So one thing that was brought up was where this money goes and how do we ever track it? Don't the, the SGOs have a role to play in that as far as reporting? and how that works within ISB and, and the Department of Revenue. Can you walk me through how that, you intend that to work? Well, the SDOs actually will administer the program. I believe they will be the repositories of the resources, uh, but they can only do that once they have been vetted by initially the uh, Department of Revenue to make sure that they are an organization in good standing, uh, that they are not for profit, that their board members don't have any other particular conflict. So there is a high level of scrutiny that will come along uh, with this because I would argue that advocates want to make sure that the dollars are going to be administered appropriately. Thank you. Would, would there be a, then a, based on the, what's in the, the bill and what ultimately could become statute, would, be a, would they go through JCAR then for some rules that administer exactly how those procedures would be followed within the, the, the uh, agencies and such? Oh, I would imagine the, the rules committee, oh, excuse me, the JCAR, Joint Committee on Administrative Rules, will have a significant role in working to try to determine exactly how this process will work. And that would have to move rel relatively quickly in order for us to have this in place by the time we want to see these scholarships being administered and to have those who are going to invest in these programs know that, they're, that their monies are going to get the tax credits properly mm -hmm. and that this process runs smoothly and effectively, but with some level of transparency. Well, certainly, that's what you know, JCAR will, will do for us. Now, mind you, this will not start until the next school year, so 2018-19 school year, and I'm not saying that there is a ton of time, but there certainly is adequate time for, for the JCAR to come together to make sure that the rules are appropriate and adequate for this program. Well, I only say it because I know my friend Leader Lang does not favor emergency rules, and we want to do the rule process properly. So I'm just making sure it's on the record that we intend to move this quickly so that it has a chance to take form when it should take form, if people understand before this begins. So there is a level of transparency that people are concerned about. I understand that part of it. I agree with that. Uh, Representative, is there also, is this, does this scholarship program require any kind of results as far as what is being done with the money and, and who gets it and what they do with that money and what those, the, the achievements of, the, of those students? Well, at, at the very least, um, the students that participate in the program will be subject to taking, um, be subject to state standards. Uh, and so we will be monitoring state standards um, with regard to these students as, as compared to students in any other, other public schools um, that are here in the state of Illinois as well. So you have at least that much in terms of, of scrutiny and, and monitoring that will, that will take place. Okay, I think in my analysis that showed that that's a breakthrough. That's something that's not normally required in, in private education. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? That's correct. Thank you. With respect to the scholarship, the, the, the students who get to receive the scholarships, we're trying to drive these opportunities for kids who are part of potentially low-income families. That's what this is all about. There's no, this is not going to go to any high-profile, you know, high-income families you know, that we hear about all the time that go to private school. This is a different model, right? This is going to go for low-income kids that need this kind of help these, to get this opportunity, I should say. Yes, not only um, are there income requirements, but students who are in what would otherwise be classified as failing schools will also be eligible for participation as well. So that's still in line with the thinking behind what this evidence-based model is supposed to help us do, right? It's supposed to help us drive money toward districts that have you know, low-income concentrations. This is also another way to help low-income families. And kind of in concert together, we're doing the best we can as a state to move the ball forward for those low-income families. Is that a, a fair and accurate representation? It is. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. I appreciate your answers to the questions to the bill. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a rare opportunity in my tenure here for us to actually look at what we could call a bipartisan success. We haven't done a lot of that lately. 
it's time for us to step up, help our kids, help our teachers, administrators, families, and get something done for Illinois. Thank you.